Okay, so Martin Luther King was born 1929. Um, Martin Luther King grew up during a time where there were prejudice, racism going on. There was a separation between white people and black people. My, uh, Martin Luther King was very, he was not like, your, he's not, he was not your typical black guy. He grew up in a Christian family. P both parents were Christians. Father was a preacher. He grew up to be a preacher too. Um, he was very gifted. He was very smart, very uh, educated. He eventually graduated high school Graduated high school when he was 15, 14, 15 years old. He was smart. He, he even skipped a couple grades. He skipped grades. He was smart. He was gifted. He made straight A's. Um, he was very friendly, out, uh, outgoing. Uh, he was short. He was never tall. And sometimes him with him being short, he would have to be, you know, he said, I'm going to use my person. He used his personality to get girls. Um, he got married at early age, you know, got beautiful kids, you know, um, basically he dated, he even dated a white girl, but his parents, his parents did not like him dating a white girl. It caused too much problems, you know, and he did it during a time where there was a lot of racism going on. So, you know, he eventually married a black woman. Um, Martha King was not innocent either. He did some dirt too. And I'm, I'm going to get to that. But, um, Martha King basically spent his whole life preaching about, wanting to get white people and black people together black people in 1950s 60s black black people were not allowed to eat with white people they were, they were not allowed to date white people they were not allowed to talk to white people they were not allowed to even look at white people um you know and that was that black people felt very offended by that they, they didn't like the rejection you know black people were not able to handle that kind of rejection not to be able to drink out their water fountain so uh, Martha King would Martha King would start marches with with black people and go to white people. They would, I mean, really, what Martha King did was get a group of black people and they would go into a white neighborhood, a, a white place, you know, and then go to an all white restaurant and they would get kicked out and arrested for it. You know, he even had a big old speech um, about it. I have a dream, you know, getting thousands of people together, you know, for a big old speech that he don't, for a four minute speech, but it went crazy. Now, Martin Luther King was also accused of fornication, sleeping around with, with prostitutes and doing orgies and doing some weird stuff. His wife, the FBI was stalking him. They were following him around. He was wiretapped. He didn't even know it. Martin Luther King didn't know that he was being wiretapped for years of his life, for, for about for, for a long time. And Martin Luther King never knew it until the FBI sent him a tape, sent his wife a tape of him having sounds of him having sex with a woman who, who appeared to be a prostitute. You know, um, they, they, the FBI has footage of him. They have, which won't be released until 2027. They have a lot of footage of him doing illegal things with, with prostitutes and stuff like that and orgies. And they, they have sound video recordings of it. They, they, they wiretap the motel and their sounds of him are even filmed. They have videos of him doing sexual acts with women. So, you know, when that, when that, I mean, people respect Martin Luther King now. They celebrate him. They've been doing this for every day for decades. But things are going to change when they release that tape of, of the footage of him doing sexual things with prostitutes and, and, and the sounds of him sleep, you know, doing some weird stuff. Now, his wife found out she did not divorce him. She still stayed with him, you know, and the FBI told him to the only way out is to take his own life. He didn't do it. Um, they said they was going to expose him for the crook that he is. And they never did it, you know, but. All the dirt is going to come out in 2027, so we got six years, six years from now, they're going to release it. And I, I can't wait because I want to see, you know, our, I mean, there, people knew there was something. I mean, he kind of, I mean, on TV, he appeared to be very nice and friendly, but he wasn't. He did some pretty bad things. You know, he was pretty wild. He smoked, too. He, he, they, they said he was also on drugs, and he drank and smoked and had sex with women, you know, prostitutes. He cheated on his wife, and he was not innocent. See, the media, like, even now. The media portrays people as innocent and they're they're friendly, but behind closed doors they do some dirt. You know, he died in 1968. He was assassinated by James Earl, whatever his name, Earl Ray, whatever, and the white guy, he little lonely white guy, but he was not, a, but he was not responsible for the death of Mark the King. They say that the FBI had something to do with his death, so. Whatever, but we all know it's all it's been established by a lot of people. There've been documentaries about it over the past couple of years that James Earl Ray was not responsible. He was just some weird, crazy little white guy, a thief, petty thief, but he was not responsible for the death of Mark the King. Mr. J here, peace.